Hello everyone, George here, and I am back to give you another video on OpenCV implementation in Python. That being said, the first thing we're going to need to do is actually make it so that we can start editing and creating Python scripts. And we're going to start with going to our start menu, going down to Anaconda, and opening up our Anaconda prompt from before. Now, if you had tried to write Python scripts within the spider interface, which is the uh, IDE or the integrated development environment that is provided that allows you to do really great, interesting things, um, it would not have worked. So let me just show you that really quick. So I'll go to start Anaconda and we're going to launch spider. So here's spider coming up. We're going to say, yes, please allow access. And we're going to bring that over. Here it is. We're going to close that on out. And here we can see spider right here. Now, if we did something like import CV2, which is the uh, library for OpenCV, and hit run, it's going to, one, ask us to save it out, but two, it's going to say that, hey, I have no idea what CV2 is. That's a huge problem for us. So we need to fix that. The way we fix it is we're going to go into our Anaconda prompt here, move this off, Anaconda prompt, and we are going to, one, activate it. So activate, uh, let's see, open CV, enter. Now we are going to do conda install, and it's going to be spider, S-P-Y-D-E-R. Let that go for a few seconds. It's gonna tell you a bunch of packages you need to install. Hit yes and enter, and let it finish. Okay, once it's done, we can actually go ahead and launch Spider. So let's do S-P-Y-D-E-R, enter. Go ahead and allow access. And here we are. I'm gonna close this file really quick. And let's give this a chance to work. Let's do import CV2 and just hit the run button right here. It's the green button. Hit save. You should notice that there's no problem here there's no error or warning. So for instance, if we had put CV3, which doesn't exist and hit run, you would have gotten this recent callback error saying that, hey, there's no module called that. So we're fine to go from here on out. So Spider's installed. Now, if Spider was not installed into that particular environment, you would be getting an error saying, hey, this CV2 does not exist and you need to follow everything that I just showed you. Now that we have everything set up, we can go ahead and start moving forward with making stuff work. Now, the first thing you might want to do is uh, handle autocomplete with your IDE, or that is Spider. If you go to Tools, Preferences, and we come to Keyboard Shortcuts, and if you sort by name, let's see, there we go, something like this eventually, you can do Code Completion. Code Completion is going to be Control and Space, and what that means is that as you're typing, you can hit Control and Space, and it will provide you with suggestions about what you should be placing in that particular uh, instance of whatever you're doing. So if you hit the dot or you're writing a function name out, it'll tell you suggestions. I highly recommend this so that you don't have to continually look up the documentation on OpenCV. I'm just going to hit OK because I'm fine with control space being the default standard. All right, let's go ahead and change this instead of import CV3 to import CV2. And in this video, what we're looking at is loading and uh, saving out files that have been loaded in. And to do that, we're going to need a couple different things. The first thing is we're gonna need a directory of files that we're gonna load in, images. And let's go ahead and take a look. So I've already created a directory called OpenCV Load Save on my desktop. If I open that up, I have several different images of my, uh, my kids being cute outside in the snow here. And the idea is that they're gonna load all them up. They all share the same extension, which is .jpg. Now, what I'm also gonna do though is create a couple other files because normally when you're working with a directory, you're gonna have other kinds of files in there. Let's just create some things like a text document and maybe a new, uh, I don't know, rich text format, RTF file, and a new uh, zip archive as well. And what we're gonna do is show you how you can only extract the images of a certain file extension from a directory so that when you are importing things, you don't need to worry about all the 
ancillary or uh, other objects within a directory. It's just going to be what you want, which are image files. So jumping back in the uh, spider here, we can take a look. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And the first thing we're going to want to do now that we've loaded CV2, which is what we always have to do at the beginning, we need to import CV2. So once again, import CV2 if you want to use OpenCV functionality. From there, we are going to go ahead and load in all the different files that we have within a directory. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first part of that is actually using cv2.imread. Now, imread is going to require two different things to work properly. The first is it needs the path to the image you're loading in, and the second thing is is a flag, and this flag is gonna tell you whether or not you want to process it as a grayscale image, a color image, or something else altogether. Now, because we're bringing in a lot of different images, we wanna loop over all those different image file names, bring in each one at a time, and process them individually. Therefore, we're gonna to want to have some kind of a function to handle that. So let's create a function in Python. We do that by typing in def for definition, and then we'll just say um, load images, something like that. And then we wanna to add to that a path. And path is the path to get to a directory. In our case, because we're dealing with this directory right here with my kids, it's either gonna be this path name right here, which is users, my name, desktop, and then open CV load save. Or if I save this file inside of this directory, it's just whatever directory I currently happen to be in, which is gonna be used uh, with a, just a period for the path name. So here I am in load images path. I'm going to make it so that by default, if I don't enter in a path name, it's gonna be equal to a dot. If it's a dot and I try to load it in, it's going to load it from the current directory my script is saved in. So let's go ahead and save our script right now. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to find my desktop and the folder I created, which is right here. And I'm going to call this, let's see, uh, Save Ing Images. You'll notice I already have a file in here called Load Save because I tested everything beforehand. I'm gonna save that on out. And by default, uh, with a period here, it's going to load in the files from that directory. If you use an empty uh, string, it will not work. So make sure you have at least a period. From there now, we need to go ahead and grab all the different files that are inside of that directory. And the way we do that is actually by using import OS. So let's do import operating system or OS. And we're going to use that now inside of our function to grab every single file available to us. So let's make this one piece at a time and then kind of uh, pull them all together to make the final statement. So first is os.list directory. And what that's going to do for us is it's going to return all the different elements within a directory. Now we do need to provide it with a few different things. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is provide it with the path that we're going to be working with. And that's going to be path that we provided up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a, let's save this out. So let's just say temp is equal to os.list directory. And I'm going to do a print and temp. Whoops. There we are, much better. So let's get rid of this for now and just do a load images. And the path is gonna be the default path that we're dealing with. We've already saved this out. I'm gonna hit run. And over here in my console area, you're gonna see that it prints out all of the different objects inside of that uh, particular directory. So here we have all the PNG files, we have the Python files, we have the rich text file, the text file, the zip file. We've got a giant mess of different things. Obviously we don't want to include all of these. Uh, OpenCV is not going to know how to handle a rich text file or any of these other ones. So we need to start dealing with uh, generator functions that will operate over every element that we happen to be importing in and then uh, basically throwing them away or keeping them based upon some sort of a conditional statement. And that's an if check basically that says, hey, if this object is an image, 
based upon um, something that we say, then yeah, let's go ahead and keep it going. Okay, so for right now, we have all the different objects right here. Now, if we wanted to make it so that all the objects we have are only objects that are images, in this case, we're dealing with JPEG images, right? So if we do a test to see whether or not at the end of each one of those objects, it's a JPEG. So let's do a for I in temp. So that's an iteration. So we're going to iterate over every element inside of temp, which are just going to be a bunch of strings. If I dot ends with, and what we're going to say is, if this ends with the, with the uh, extension JPEG, then what we're going to want to do is save that information out. So I'm going to create a new variable and say images is equal to just a list. And we're going to do images dot append, and we're going to say I gets stuck to it. And then instead of printing out temp, we're just going to print out our images. We're going to hit run and see what we get. And now you can see that because of our check here, where we see whether or not I ends with a JPEG value, we only get JPEGs out here. And we have omitted all of the different uh, RTF files, text files, and everything else that's basically not an image that we want to handle. So that's a great way for you to kind of cull information and make sure you're only dealing with what you need to. Now it's not enough to just pull in the different file names. We also need to make sure that the files and the path are together in one. Right now, because the path is simple, it's wherever the file is saved, we don't have to worry about anything. But if the path was actually in another directory or a subdirectory, we need that information added to it because the OpenCV implementation, that is the uh, file I am read, needs to know exactly where that is, both the path and the file name. So we need to integrate those together. The way we're going to do that is by using os.path.join. That takes the first part of a path, the directory that is, and then the file name and concatenates them together into one final string that we can use to load stuff. So to make this work, all we need to do now that we've loaded up our images is to do os.path, and then it takes in the path, which we've passed in, so path, and then it takes in the file name, and the file name itself is going to be every increment inside of images, and it will print out uh, the entire directory extension. We've been doing this bit by bit so far, but we can use a generator function to actually complete this operation in one line of code, which sounds kind of crazy, but in Python you can actually do it. So what I'm going to do is comment out all these different lines, and to comment out multiple lines we use triple quotes. There we go. And there we go again. And instead, I'm going to do this all in one quick line. So whenever you call the load images function, we're going to return to you a array. And this array is going to contain inside of it all of the different images using everything I've shown you so far. So the first thing we need to do is to take everything that we've done so far and say, OK, I'm creating and exporting out a path of joined paths and files. So we're going to do os.path.join. And inside of there is the path. And of course, the last thing is the file name. Now we're going to use the generator uh, statement to actually provide us with an f value that's going to work. We're going to start with a for statement. So for file f in our operating system dot list directory. We're going to pass in our path, so that's going to return to us all of the different objects we have inside of that directory as f, that variable. And then we're going to add a conditional element to the end of it, a conditional statement that says if f happens to end with our .jpg, so .jpg extension, then that particular object is going to be passed on through this entire thing to our array that ends right here, and it's going to be joined with that path element. And we're going to return that entire array as one object. And we can work with that. So let's go ahead and do this. So we have load images here. We have this entire one line generator statement right there. And let's do a print load images. Let's hit, let's clear this out first. Clear and hit run. 
And here we can see we get the entirety of it. So we have our dot slash slash and then every single image that we have. So now we need to load in all these different images. So let's create a variable called file names is equal to print image loads. And we are going to iterate over every file in file names and load that in using im read. So let's go ahead and do that with for file in file names. And we want to do im read, or excuse me, we want to do cv2 dot im read. And it's going to require that we pass in first the file path. So that's going to be file. And the second thing is going to be cv2 dot im read. And it's going to be a flag that basically tells us how we want to load that image data in. Now, in this case, I'm just going to say that I want to do it unchanged. That is, I don't, I don't want to load it in and process it in any way. I'm expecting it to be an RGB alpha channel or an RGB value period. And that's what we're going to get out of this. Now I need to save this data out. So I'm going to create a new variable called images. It's going to be an array and it's going to be empty and I'm going to append that to it. So images dot append and there we go. Save that right there. Now when we're finished, let's make sure we load the data in by doing a print images. And let's hit run over here. Now we have a none type is not iterable right here. So let's find out what's wrong with that. So line 29, so for file in file names, that's because I have this print still right here. So let's get rid of that. Now file names will actually equal the output of load images, hit run. And what you're going to notice is a bunch of sort of uh, concatenated or truncated image uh, arrays. What they're doing is basically showing you just a portion of each array. So now we do know that we have loaded each image in. Each image is an unsigned integer of values between 0 and 255. And you can see part of them right here. So great. That means we've actually loaded these images in. All right, so now we're going to want to save our images out. The way we're going to do this is by using the function cv2.imwrite. We're going to iterate over every single image within the images array and then push them out one at a time with a very special file name. That is a file name that's going to be between zero and however many images we happen to have. The idea here is that we're changing the file name and we're also going to be changing the type of file it is to show that uh, OpenCV can convert between different file types. Here we're going to push out a PNG instead. So let's do a for image in images loop. So now we're going to iterate over every single different image within images. We're going to do a cv2 dot im write. Now the first thing it takes is the file name. Now what I want for the file name is I want a, a numerical value. So I need some sort of a number to work with. So let's just do, uh, let's see, num is equal to zero to start with. So let's do num, let's do str to convert to a string and then num. And then I want to add to that the extension, the end of it, I'm going to say a dot PNG is the kind of file I want to work with. The next variable takes the actual image that we have in memory and uh, pushes it out. So let's do our image right there. So we're iterating over every image. We're giving it a new file name, and then we're saying this is the image we want to be pushing out right there. Now, the last thing we need to do is update num, so num plus equals one. Now, num is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, and our files will then be zero, one, two, three, and four with a dot PNG extension on the end. So let's go ahead and hit run really quick and open up that folder and I'm going to hit refresh and we can see those different images loading in here. Now they are renamed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so forth and so on all the way up to the last image right there and they are of a different type which is PNG. So hopefully what you've seen within this is it's very easy for us to load images in and to save them out. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next one, we're going to start taking a look at actually showing these images using IM Show, uh, both within uh, OpenCV as well as Matplotlib. I will see you all next time. So long and goodbye.